Welcome to antihacker.info. Today we're going to be covering a, a web cracking program called AirCrack. Um, I have a link to their site on my web from my webpage under my links in the bottom corner. And I have a link to AirCrack NG, which is right here. The reason I have a link to AirCrack NG is uh, I had a hard time finding AirCrack online. It may have been abandoned, but it looks like the people over at AirCrack NG have uh, taken it and added onto it and made some new plans for it. So we'll see how their site develops and what is done. But anyway, you can go here and download a copy of the program. If, uh, if you need a link to the site, I have it listed there. And also, it's right here is aircrack-ng.org. Go ahead and move into a demonstration. I still have a copy of Aero, uh, AeroDump 2.4 or AirCrack 2.4, but we're going to use AirCrack NG for this demonstration. And what we're looking at is right now it's going to search. You do have to have the correct wireless card and drivers for this program to work. Information on that can be found on the AirCrack NG website. Um, there's support, documentation, and other information that will basically let you know what cards work and what don't. And basically, also give you an idea of what drivers you may or may not need. In this case I do have an Aronco style card which is supported. So I pick my network adapter and now it's going to ask me interface types. Because I do have a Aronco card I'm going to go with option O, Realtek, and it's going to ask me what channels or channel do I want to sniff on. Um, you can use NetStumbler if you'd like and just for those that don't know, I can go ahead and launch that real quick to show you what that looks like. NetStumbler is nice and all. The only problem with NetStumbler is it'll give you a quick idea of what you're looking at. And it will also give you the channel it's on, the speed, the vendor, encryption, signal and noise. And it is possible to uh, hook GPS up with NetStumbler so you can better map the access point. One downside to NetStumbler is it will not see access points with the SSID not broadcasted. Where when you're in a crack, you can see that. Um, normally, if you're just doing a quick site survey, you would select zero to scan all channels. The only downside to that is by scanning all channels, when you're not currently looking at one or the other channel, you will miss data. So if you know what channel the access point you're trying to uh, test the web key on, Go ahead and pick that channel. In this case, we're going to pick channel 1 because we've seen two access points in channel 1. One encrypted, one not. Now it's going to ask us for a name of the file. <clears throat> As it's doing the sniffing and capturing the weak web keys or IV keys, it's going to save those to a file. We need to name the file. In this case, we'll name the file test. Now it's going to ask us, do we want to write, save only the web keys? Or do we want to record the whole session? Um, for you know hard drive hard drive space, we'll just select the web keys. Now it's going to launch, and as you can see, we're, we're sniffing. The key thing to look for is under the data field. That's the actual IV keys or weak encryption keys you're looking for. A traffic a network with very little traffic is going to produce very little weak keys. So it'll be very difficult to crack that network. If the network has a lot more traffic, you have a much better or greater chance of breaking the web key. In this case, what I'm looking at is this access point here, which looks like it says Baron. Now, the problem I'm facing right off this moment is that I've got very weak power to this access point. From where my wireless card is, I'm barely reaching this access point. Of course, the closer you are and the higher power you have, the better chances you will have of collecting the keys you want. Um, the beacons is just letting you know that it is seeing the beacon traffic from the access point. The data, of course, I've already told you is the web keys, or the weak IV keys, the channel, the baud rate for this access point, and NetStumbler told us earlier that this is a Linksys access point. Um, encryption is web, and then there's the, there's the network. Um, as you're looking through here, you can see as it's collecting the data, it's also going to see any stations out there, which would be basically computers, that are talking to the access point. Because the data is currently encrypted, we won't be able to really make sense or heads or tails of the actual data, but we will be able to 
collect the weak keys for you know decryption later. Now, it's been said that you need a million IV keys or you know 500,000. I have been able to break weaker web keys with as little as 10,000 IV keys. It really depends on if it's 64 or 128 bit bit web and some other stuff in there. So you're really going to have to play around with it in some of the options. Right now we're just looking at the collection portion and as we're going through here we're seeing what we got. One cool feature with Kane Enable that's most recently come out is as they support the uh, AeroDump protocol, Mayo over at Kane decided to add in the cracker portion a place for your 8211 keys. And as you can see, he's got them there. You right click, analyze, and then you pick the one with the most keys. As you can see here, I have uh, 23,000. Then you would start your attack. You'd pick this, the, the type of attack you want, the length of the web key, and then you can just start it. This will take your CPU up at a high level. But basically, this is kind of a GUI or a more usable GUI for AeroCrack or any of the you know the files you get from using AeroCrack. There are other programs out there to sniff web. Most of your web cracking programs are going to be Linux based. This one is Windows and Linux and Kane Enable is Windows only which is pretty good for all those out there that are just so used to using Windows. The fewer IV keys you have the longer it will take you to break it. And there is no guarantee that you will break the web key. It's just basically a chance of odds. Um, I have found in the past that the more keys you have, the quicker it goes. I have seen web be uh, broken in as little as 10 seconds. You just have to have the correct. And you uh, need the, the extension that's going to be saved when you're done with your file is going to be a .ivs extension. Go ahead and exit Kane. Bring error crack back up. And as you can see, just from this time this video has been running, this bottom AP, we've been able to collect 173 plus packets, and the top one just about 100 packets. Now, both of these networks have very few users. Um, the bottom one is the one I'm on, and currently has my computer sitting idle doing no web surfing and is collecting keys. And then the top one has two computers that aren't even being used. So you can see in a very inactive network you can still collect the packets you want and even at a great distance. Uh, the top access point I'm connected to with the low power it is a good distance away from where I'm at right now and uh, it's with Windows alone I couldn't even connect to this access point. Uh, it's just too great of a distance but with a good external antenna or maybe even a cantenna or directional you can collect web, uh, the IV keys to break web you know, a quarter of a mile away, a mile away, depending on uh, the type of antenna you have. Because remember, all you're doing is you're just sniffing in the air and looking for weak encryption keys. So you can compare them against each other, and that's how you get the decryption. Basically, you're, you're just brute forcing it with known variables. Um, let's go ahead and close this down. And we'll look at the file we created. Because I'm lazy, I'm just going to go here, properties, find target. That's going to take me to where the folder is. And I'm going to scroll down until I find the one I did. And I think we named this one test. So this is the folder, this is the file I want. And then what I could do is I could go into Kane and add that file. There is programs within AeroCrack. It's a whole suite of programs that you can use. Um, you don't have to just uh, use the arrow dump. And of course, I can. Okay, and I can't find her at the second. I prefer using Kane because I like Kane. It saves all my stuff in one box. It's one-stop shop. So what I will do is I will go here to Kane, launch it, go to Cracker, scroll down, come into here. Remove all, add to list, and then I just need to scroll on over to where I where I had that key. And in this case, that key was in documents and settings, administrator, 
It's going to be different in your computer. This is just where I happen to have the program sitting. All right. And then I called it test. So right there. Analyze. And you can see this is the bottom one we were looking at first. And there's going to be almost no chance to break this key with that many uh, IV packets. There's just not enough. Yeah, see it wants at least 250 for a 64-bit 60, key and a thousand or more for a 128-bit key. So basically I don't even have enough uh, IVs for even for can to even try it, which isn't a big deal. I mean all I can do all I what all I'll have to do now is just go back to sniffing. But again, this is just a quick example. I don't want to currently break a web key here on this uh, video. I just wanted to show you how it is done. Um, I still do use error crack. It's pretty much the same thing, it's just an earlier version. Um, I'm not sure how many differences there are, but there are other programs within where you can locate where you can add in the cat file. Sometimes you can just come in here and just drag and drop. Actually for Mac filter and whatnot. And then you got WZ Cook EXE. And what this is going to do is this is going to scan your computer of every access point you've been to and then dump the keys for you. Of course, I don't want to dump all my keys right here on this video and show you all of them, but basically that's kind of where you go with it. Anyway, Google for it, look around. I have a link to Aircrack NG um, as I showed you before here. And there is some information resources, a lot of info, you know, they, they provide all of the stuff you should need. And just you know, read up on anything before you try it. Feel free to go into their forum section, ask questions. <clears throat> they have all the tools you'll need here. They have the documentations, drivers, kind of compatibility. One thing you do want to do is go to their FAQ and do look up, and it'll explain how you can crack the keys and all the other information within it. Again, I recommend this to test your own network. I do not support in any way malicious hacking. I do not endorse or want anybody to go out there and try to break into anybody else's network. And if you do and you get caught, you got what's coming to you. Anyway, uh, any questions or whatnot, go ahead and email me. Contacts are on the website. And I hope to release another video soon. Thanks.